Hi, I'm James, and today in this video I'm taking a look at yesterday's announcement from AMD of their new Ryzen processor, um, or range of processors I should say more correctly, uh, and this is going to be their new range of products based upon the new Zen architecture. So previously um, AMD had a range of products based on what was called Bulldozer, and it was the replacement for the sort of Phenom range, um, so the uh, K10 processors, I believe, um, which sort of followed on from the very successful Athlon 64s and then the Phenoms, which introduced their quad cores and so on. They then had this line of processors called Bulldozers, where they had these strange sort of processor modules with um, dual integer pipelines and shared floating points. And I have to say, I kind of went away from looking at AMD stuff at that point. Um, they just didn't have any particularly compelling products for me as a fairly high-end computer user. So I kind of stopped following them. And Ryzen and the Zen architecture has really brought me back into taking note of what AMD are doing currently. Um, simply because... You know, I'm not that price sensitive when I'm buying my processors, or I wasn't in the past. Um, and so if they didn't have anything that was going to fill those high-end niches, and I mean, at the moment, I actually use an 8-core Xeon processor, um, Sandy Bridge E generation, um, and I have kind of been looking at upgrading and have been holding on for the Zen products to see what they bring. So with the announcements yesterday, um, AMD were showing off what they are calling Summit Ridge. So this is, it's not really a direct competitor in some regards to what you have in the um, Broadwell E range, so the i7-7900K, 7950K, because you have, um, it's still sitting on a more mainstream looking platform, but we'll say more about that later. But when you look at it from a high level, um, it does look quite similar to the um, the sort of Broadwell E style products. So similar to them, you have this eight core 16 thread arrangement. So they've gone away from having the dual integer pipeline or cores and then shared FPU. And they've gone to a more uh, Intel style arrangement where they have two cores, which are full integer and pipelines oh sorry a single core with um integer and pipe and floating point but the ability to run two threads through it so uh simultaneous multi-threading or um hyper threading as intel call it and the process that they've been showing off is that eight core design with 20 megs of total cache that's a combined 20 megs of the level two and level three so it's not a full uh 20 meg level three cache it may be sort of 15 16 megabytes we they haven't sort of specified here and some other interesting technologies as well um so from that perspective it does look like you've got a straight competitor for something like your broadwell e range of products however this sits on the am4 platform um, and this looks much more like, say, your um, your traditional Sky Lake, if you're comparing to Intel platforms, that kind of pl uh, product where you have um, your your uh, dual channel memory. Uh, it's now moving to DDR4, and with Bristol Ridge, we already saw AMD introducing some uh, APUs which already use DDR4 memory, but we get support for nice things like NVMe. Uh, SSDs, USB 3.1, uh, Generation 3 PCI Express, and just looks a lot more modern platform than some of the AM3 and AM3 Plus products that were out there, or some, some of the FM range stuff. So it's, it's really nice to see AMD bringing that sort of platform up to look more modern and more what we expect. Um, and it means these chips, while the chips are multi-core like the Broadwell E range, um, we're not looking at a 10-core like the 6950X, but that's a very expensive product anyway. Um, but they're kind of going in between. So you've got the thread count, but you don't quite have the same overall platform. Um, I'd assume they're going with fewer PCI Express lanes. Um, so I'd expect for SLI configurations like your Skylake uh, LGA 1151 uh, setups you're going to be going 8 plus 8 rather than 16 plus 16 as you'd find on a 2011 platform but 
for most people that's not really a big issue these are really high-end concerns and it's very unlikely that your graphics performance is going to be bottlenecked by only running an 8 plus 8 PCI Express 3 configuration anyway so from what they've shown as well in the demos they were showing against a i7 6900 processor and so that is again eight th uh, eight cores 16 threads um they were saying so they were saying uh, the zen chip or the summit ridge chip they were running was running at 3.4 gigahertz without boost clocks so that would suggest their either their silicon isn't quite final yet or just their firmware isn't um you know giving that sort of boost clocks or turbo mode um particularly effectively currently so they were running at a locked clock speed for that and or that is the implication was that they were running without boost clocks um that's certainly how they phrased it anyway versus a i7 uh, 60 uh, 900k which would have been running uh, i believe it was 3.2 gigahertz base clock up to 3.7 turbo and what they were showing was performance between the two was pretty much the same and um, they showed a test using blender and render times was pretty much identical what does appear to be the case was that that i7 uh, 6900k was using a fairly small cooler so it may well have been running more at 3.2 gigahertz than 3.7 um without and it's kind of that benchmarking thing of you're showing a fair comparison um but you're maybe not optimizing things to show your or setting up things to show your opposition in the best possible light um or to give you make yourself look a little better than you are that isn't to say that's definitely the case it's just without full details and independent testing you always have to show a little bit of skepticism here um even so it's certainly promising the i7 6700k is a very expensive chip i believe here in the uk you're looking sort of well i believe us pricing is 999 dollars um which is really putting it outside the price range of what i want to spend on my next system um and it's even more than that if you go to their 10 core product and also platform product uh, pricing is high you know if you're looking lga 2011 the motherboards are a lot more expensive than say a what we would expect a am4 motherboard to be just because of complexity in routing four channels of ddr4 you have to have more layers to your motherboards and just generally they're priced as premium products so what's going to be critical here is for amd to get their pricing right get out a product that performs well and it, it has to be competitive really without caveats it can't be as good as you know a skylake chip in some things and as good as a broadwell e chip in other things but overall it has weak points they need to release something that's good across the board here to really get that enthusiast market back and it will be really interesting to see if they can do that i my machine here is really looking for a refresh and like i say zen has been one of those things where i have been holding out for that to see if it either is worth buying in its own right or if it pushes intel to do some things which are stronger as well um you know with them looking to do sort of coffee lake as well with the six core mainstream products um, it's also interesting that AMD were claiming, uh, I believe, 95 watt TDP um, or 95 watt power usage for the uh, Ryzen chip they were testing against a 140 watt Intel chip. Um, again, the way Intel and AMD measure power can be a little different, where you have what they call SDP, so scenario design power, TDP, they don't necessarily mean the same things so again it will be very interesting to see with some full independent testing how that actually shakes out anyway i hope that sort of has been interesting to you again if people would like me to do more of these videos let me know and perhaps some topics in the comments below um and it's going to be a really exciting 2017 with sky lake e uh, and coffee lake bringing sort of new refreshed um high-end and mainstream six core chips on the intel side but also with this ryzen product range seeing what amd can do to kind of regain that enthusiast market share and pull themselves out of just really providing sort of fairly low-end chips to the pc market 
So if you want to see more from us, like I say, let us know what you'd like to see in future and hit the subscribe button to stay in touch as we post more. Thanks for watching.